Good morning. Happy Thursday. I uh, saw yesterday in uh, Turtle Boy's case that uh, the prosecution found out the defense attorney, Bradle, had notified the jail that someone by the name of Altman was an attorney. Communications between a defendant and his attorney are privileged. The jail shouldn't, I don't really believe they don't, but they shouldn't, and they certainly can't use anything that they intercept uh, between a attorney and his client. Now, that also extends to the attorney's office. Because, for example, um, you call up your attorney's office, you say, hey, uh, you know, let my attorney know X, Y, and Z. That, that's, that is a privileged communication. So it shocked me, the allegations that were made, that Bradel told the jail that this Altman person was an attorney, and therefore communications between Turtle Boy and Altman were to be privileged, were to, were to be excluded from the monitoring system that the jail uses, that they were confidential. The allegation, the underlying allegation, is that uh, this Altman, who is not an attorney, was being used by Turtle Boy to coordinate ongoing and continuous witness harassment. Which, if true, would be a crime. If true, would make this Altman accessory to the crime. And might make Bradle an accessory to that crime. <sighs> So the prosecution asked the court to uh, restrict Turtle Boy's phone calls to his attorney and exclude this Altman person and asked for a $10,000 penalty sanction against Bradle. Now that's just what this court can do. Of course, there is some mechanism probably through the Massachusetts Supreme Court, where the Massachusetts Supreme Court, or whatever their highest court in the land is, if they're like, they, they might be like uh, New York and, and name their courts funny. But the highest court in Massachusetts, most likely, most likely, in most states it works this way, I'm going to assume that it works this way in Massachusetts, will be able to punish Bradle for violations of whatever their ethics rules for attorneys in Massachusetts are. Because I guarantee you there are ethics rules for attorneys in Massachusetts. And probably somewhere on there, if not specifically, then implicitly, is that you can't tell a jail that a non-attorney is an attorney to aid and abet your client into organizing witness intimidation on the outside in a different case. So my reaction when I read the charges was, of course, holy shit. Toned down somewhat for the camera now, but it... Uh, my faith, honestly, in the profession of lawyers has diminished drastically since I've started paying attention to what these lawyers do. Like, in the Springer case, I mean, two retards fighting in a dark closet. You know, like, who's going to come out intact or at least walking? Who knows? Because they're just two retards wailing away in there. Just no clue what they're doing. Just swinging. Going back to Wish. You know, like, what was that guy doing? Besides, besides taking... Uh, Peter's 
money. The Peritini's attorney, he just he he literally just gets a a uh, motion to strike upheld, but he against him, against his affirmative defenses because they don't plead facts. And then what does the motherfucker do? He files an amended uh, answer with affirmative defenses that wait for it. Don't plead facts. <laughs> and now Bradle, it you know so. So that's that's where my headspace was at. Now this morning, someone posted in my Discord that Bradle did an interview about this specific situation. Which, <clears throat> are you retarded, sir? Are you retarded? Why would you give an interview about it? Anything you say can and will be used against you. And right now, Bradle's on the hot seat. Bradle's on the hot seat. He has a hearing tomorrow at 9 o'clock uh, in Massachusetts. Specifically on this issue, on, on potential him getting sanctioned by this court. And, and the sanction, I mean, the in California, like, courts can, like, if, if you get sanctioned for more than $1,000 as an attorney, if you as the attorney get sanctioned for more than $1,000, not if your client, but if you as an attorney get sanctioned for more than $1,000, you got to report it to the state bar and you may get disciplined by the state bar for it. And they can recommend you to the state bar for discipline. I mean, you, you run risks doing this kind of shit. So he is essentially a defendant now, and he is giving a fucking interview. And in this interview, he states something along the lines of, I'm, I'm loosely paraphrasing it now, but, oh, uh, yeah, I misspoke that Altman was an attorney. She's actually a volunteer, because, you know, attorneys confuse volunteers and attorneys all the time, right? So she's an attorney that was uh, one of three volunteers, or no, she's a volunteer that was uh, one of three volunteers that were uh, sent to him by a... New York law firm. Which raises all sorts of questions for me. Like, uh, like there, there's two tracks. There's two tracks this can go down. Number one, is this New York law firm legit? Like, did a New York law firm really? Like, bro, we're going to send you volunteers. Here's a letter saying we're sending you volunteers. First of all, what are they going to use the volunteers for? And, and they could. I mean, don't get me wrong. You could use someone to, like, watch the three million plus hours of content that Turtle Boy was churning out on this to see if there's any exculpatory material in there, to see if there's any uh, material in there that you have to worry about, etc. Because you don't want, to, as an attorney, to spend, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 hours reviewing videos from your client um, I mean what well, you do but your client can't afford it you know what I'm saying so so there are things a volunteer could be doing none of which involve communications with the client while the client's in jail I mean if if the volunteer finds something the volunteer would take it to the attorney the attorney would then review it and then if the attorney needs clarification the attorney would then talk to the client right because the attorney has to know what's going on and the attorney unlike the volunteer knows or should know the law knows or should know the facts of the case knows or should know what is or isn't relevant what is or isn't important but holy oh my god so either either it's real and a real New York law firm sent him volu volu a list of volunteers. It's fake. A someone faked a New York law firm sending him volunteers. But either way, why did he accept them? Like, what were you thinking, bro? You don't just you don't just take random people into your law firm and have them start working on your case because you don't know them. You don't know them. And, like, why would you take some other law firm's word for it? You know what I mean? Like, you know, you, you got to be kind of paranoid as an attorney because if you bring in someone into your law firm as a volunteer based on somebody else's word, and it turns out that they're, like, uh, the daughter of the best friend of one of the victims, 
and they're really there just to undermine and sabotage your case. Like, you got to be paranoid, right? So what the fuck was he thinking? Or it's just complete made-up bullshit, and he knew what he was doing. But there's, there's, there's no... There's no like win in this. There's no like, oh, well, bro, you know, I can explain it. So like with the, with the client on the, this, not the client on the stand, but with the witness on the stand, who's like, no, I didn't say that. No, blah, blah, blah. Who was a, who was, who he thought was going to be a witness for his side, who turned out to be an adverse witness. I can understand that on, on, uh, hearings that are very short notice on a short notice hearing, you're scrambling. You don't have time to do everything as an attorney. You, not, not to the extent that you want to or need to. So if your client says, I have a witness who will testify for us about X, Y, and Z, you're probably going to be like, okay, well, my, my client isn't stupid. My client isn't going to sabotage his own case. He's not going to tell me that someone will testify about X when actually they're going to testify about Y. And so you put them on the stand. And so I can understand his confusion, like, wait, but, uh, and then trying to treat her like a hostile witness. I can understand that. You could get put in that position where you thought a client was going to, or you thought a witness was going to testify X and they testify Y. But this, like, there's no, I can't, I can't think of a win. And I, it just, it just blows my mind. I, 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 I have conspiracy theorists out there who are telling me that like, that like, uh, he might be doing this, Bradle might be doing this to get out of uh, representing Turtle Boy or something like that. Because Bradle doesn't want to represent Turtle Boy, and I guarantee you he does. As long as the money keeps coming in, he wants to represent Turtle Boy. And nothing, nothing in this is good for him. Like, he, like, I'm not going to say he could get disbarred over this. Like, maybe he could, I don't know. Um, but this, I mean, this, he could get reprimanded. I, I, I would, if he did get uh, disciplined by whatever Massachusetts state bar or whatever their disciplinary board is, he could get a reprimand over it very easily, like a written reprimand, a, 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 a public reprimand, which won't help you get clients, generally speaking. Uh, it's certainly, it's certainly going to expose every single client that he has in jail who he's defending it's going to expose them to increased scrutiny he's never going to get to play this this little trick again for his for a client saying you know so that his client can talk to someone who's not an attorney not part of Bradle's office um and still have it be confidential that's that's never happening Bradle's going to be under intense scrutiny Bradle every time so Criminal, like, <laughs> the same judges do the criminal cases over and over and over and over again. Like, when you go into, when you go into, like, uh, Placer County Superior Court, it's the same judges who do the criminal cases over and over and over again. It's the same judges who do the family cases. It's the same judges who do the probate cases. Same with Sacramento, same with Placer County, or uh, El Dorado County, Nevada County. I'm going to assume that in, that in uh, Massachusetts, it's going to work the same way. That in a particular county, they're going to have a set group of judges who do the criminal matters in each court because they have a funny court system. But Bradle will end up in front of that judge again if he keeps doing uh, criminal cases. And that judge is going to remember him. I, there's there's no win. There's no, there's no right to this. There's no like, I can understand what you were doing, Bradle. I mean, I hope the money was worth it for him. If, if the best defense you got is a letter from a New York law firm saying that she was a volunteer, if that's the best you got, maybe you won't get sanctioned. But that's about it. Like, that's about it. Like, if you could convince the judge that you were relying on some other law firm's uh, advice that you should use this particular volunteer, but then you made the choice, you, Bradle, made the choice to have her be one of the confidential calls that uh, that your client can make. And then it randomly turns out that she's a turtle rider, turtle wave rider, something, turtle surfer? Whatever, whatever Turtle Boys calls his followers. 
it turns out she's one of those. And, and not only is she one of those, but she's like one of his like top lieutenants or editors or, or whatever. I mean, I mean, maybe you won't get sanctioned. Maybe you can convince the judge with that they're putting enough doubt out there that the judge isn't going to sanction you. But that's not good, bro. That's not good. I mean, I I expect that whatever their disciplinary committee is in uh, Massachusetts for attorneys is going to look into this. Mello, the, the prosecutor, I, I would almost guarantee you that he's already notified whatever that board is or bar association or whoever does it the whatever disciplinary committee they have has been notified i guarantee you and it's going to turn into extra time and and potential liability for bradle i mean it this is a no bueno this is a this is a this is a this is a fuck this is the worst fuck up i've seen an attorney make in covering these things like this isn't just a shit pleading this is this isn't just this isn't just insulting the judge that you're trying to get a good ruling out of. This is this is potentially like like state bar action. So anyway, I I'm done with my rant. Um it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow, you know. Good luck, Bradle, you know. I don't want to see anybody lose their livelihood over something as stupid as what Bradle did, but like you're 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 making all attorneys look shitty, bro. Like, stop, please. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.